Okay, well, somebody sent in a question, and I wanted to make a little video about this interesting question. The question was, the famous Euler identity, e to the pi i equals minus 1, or you also see it written e to the pi i plus 1 equals 0, what's the beauty, right? He's, you know, a lot of people seem to have a orgasmic experience with this equation. You see, you know, every once in a while to this day, I see it on some, written on somebody's t-shirt somewhere. I guess, I guess that means it's laundry day. So the Maxwell equations t-shirt and the e equals mc squared t-shirts are in the wash. Um, so it turns out there is some beauty in this equation. And I want to go through and hopefully identify and uh, help you to experience some of this beauty. Now I have here uh, on the left uh, uh, a brief uh, outline of sort of the thought process just to keep it organized. And then I do want to say also that I wish I were smart enough to come up with this thought process and analysis myself, but there's a book by this guy named Needham on uh, complex variables. It's an incredible book. And what I'm going to show you is written on like page two of a 400 page book. So if you think this is interesting, the, the whole book, well, the whole, a lot of the book is like, serious stuff, but it's a fascinating uh, work for sure. So let me kind of go through this. So we have this e identity, e to the pi equals minus one. What's so beautiful about that? Well, it's related to this equation, right? The Euler equation, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta, right? i is the square root of minus one, an imaginary variable. And so let's investigate this equation, right? Because if you plug theta equals pi, into here you get that, right? That's where this came from. So let's investigate e to the i theta. Let's kind of do a sort of a systematic, you know, logical step-by-step uh, -step thought process. So let's start out with talking about e to the x, right? The, one of the defining properties of e to the x, right? Not a coincidence, but a defining property of e to the x is that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, right? In fact, we can use this in order to derive e to the x, right? If we say d dx of f of x equals f of x, right? Or in other words, d, uh, df dx equals f. And then we go through our separation of variables. 